Hello guys, so today we are doing a intro Photoshop right? a Photoshop for artists It's like a workshop or tutorial, you know, because a bunch of my students uh, asks uh, a lot of questions about Photoshop and Photoshop is not really a topic that I cover on my classes or courses because it's something that you can find for free in the internet the problem is that most of the tutorials are for designers you know or other types of uh, artists so I will do this tutorial slash workshop uh, teaching you guys Photoshop for artists so uh, if you you are not an artist uh, I would recommend you to watch another tutorial because I will jump some uh, tools and features that uh, painters and, and draftsmen don't don't use that much. So if you are more like a designer, uh, I mean graphic designer, right? If you are a concept artist, concept designer, this tutorial is for you. But it, but if you are like more a graphic designer, uh, I think that is maybe better tutorials out there right so uh, let's start with the workshop slash tutorial okay let's go the first thing that you guys uh, will do when you open your Photoshop is click here on file right uh, the first thing is that uh, your Photoshop it will not be uh, like mine because my mine's already a uh, uh, already I already uh, adjusted the Photoshop to my taste so uh, just keep that in mind you know it, it will be a little bit different but the basics it will be the same so when you uh, start up your Photoshop it will take uh, you a couple of uh, seconds uh, you can go here to new right and you click here so file new uh, this window uh, will pop up and here uh, is basically the size of the image so I will uh, uh, go through uh, all the the things that you have to to do here first thing you have to 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 decide the size of your image you can decide uh, Pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, or, or picas. I don't know wh what is th those two right here. Uh, for digital art and drawing, uh, I think pixels and centimeters is the most uh, used. Actually, um, all the artists that I know use only pixels, but if you maybe for doing something for outdoor or something like this, poster, maybe you you use these inches and millimeters, right? Uh, now size, uh, size really depends on a lot of things. Uh, the first one is uh, what you want to do. So for example, if you want to just study and do some doodles, you don't need to have a really really big file you know uh, you can actually copy my this size right here is a really uh, good size for studies for uh, uh, simple things when you are a beginner I think this size is really good but for example if you want to do illustration you will have to go to a size more like this one right here and when you get the briefing from a for client, for example, oh, paint uh, angel for me, they will probably say the size that they want, they want so you don't need to worry about it. Uh, the only issue that you will probably have, and that's the second thing that I was uh, talking about before, is your PC, right? Uh, Photoshop is not really... Uh, do not take uh, that much on your PC, but uh, when you are doing like uh, illustration, concept art, 
sometimes the the file can get uh, really big and then you have to have a really good PC especially if you want to do something uh, that is a little bit uh, bigger so uh, if you have a low-end PC you, ha you don't have a good PC try to stay on the lower pixels you know but if you want to do a uh, 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 illustration work you will have to improve your PC a little bit but you don't need to worry about it right now because this is only for people that are already ro working in the industry if you are learning Photoshop today you you still have years until you can get uh, uh, good you know to worry about a PC if you want to know uh, my PC setup I will leave in the description right uh, my PC is not new but it's a really good PC especially for uh, concept art and illustration right so for now I will leave this size right here is a good size again again for studying and everything so I think that that is great the other thing uh, is resolution here this is really important and sometimes it's more important than the size right because for example if you create a really huge, really huge uh, uh, pixel size but you leave a uh, really low resolution uh, your art is to be uh, uh, really low has so you need to leave at, at 300 is the one that I I usually leave you know uh, you can get away putting less and more than this you don't really need so I think uh, 300 is like uh, industry strength is standard for concept art illustration and everything uh, color mode you can live in RGB uh, grayscale you don't have uh, colors uh, uh, this one right here is for if you sometimes if you are working with uh, comics or magazines things that uh, it will have uh, physical copies sometimes they ask you to use this one you know but uh, usually they will say to you if you need to, to do to, to use this one but uh, if you you work for uh, internet like uh, Instagram or a video game or something like that you can use RGB for sure no problem at all um, here is the your background right you can put white black or black ground color I usually put this color right here this white value right here why just because I don't like to use a uh, full white or full or full black on my backgrounds I like to to put uh, a little bit of uh, gray on it you know uh, especially if you want to to do highlights and stuff uh, if you don't know what a highlight is don't worry but uh, I would highly recommend you to to just uh, click here and put uh, this sphere right here a little bit towards down you will click create right here and you're gonna create this thing right here this uh, canvas right uh, imagine that this is like a piece of paper that you can paint and draw on it okay right so the first thing that you, you have to understand it is that Photoshop is really uh, changeable you can change and customize a lot so for example you can see this uh, thing here on the side I can grab this and put whatever I want on my screen and you can actually put this in another monitor so for example I have two monitors and I leave uh, one window in, another, in my other monitor so you can put everything here on another monitor if you want you know uh, and you can also move everything and put whatever you want uh, this is really good because for example I draw on a big screen so for example if I am drawing right here I don't need to go right here to pick a color I can just grab this thing right here 
and put here on the side and pick the color that I want from here, right? So you can customize everything. If you have a really big monitor, uh, you can grab and move. If you don't want to see a window or you want to see, so for example, I have this color window right here. This window is here because I want to pick uh, colors. But for example, let's suppose you don't want any color. You just want to to use uh, black and white, and so you don't need to see this thing right here. You can go here in window, and it will show you all the windows that Photoshop has, right? And you just click uh, on top of it and. There you go. You cannot see color anymore. If you want to bring color back, you just go here and click color again. It will show up on the same place that you left. What are the windows that uh, I should leave on? This is really depends on what you are, what you like, and what you want to uh, to work on it. Because, for example. If you are more of a painter, you probably will like to have color right here. If you are more like, if you like to draw more, maybe you don't need it. You know, uh, it really, really depends on your uh, work. So, for example, I right now I am drawing more than I'm painting. So, for example, I don't use uh, this brush settings right here right i don't need to, to use it because i usually use the same brush throughout all the the drawing but maybe when i go back to painting more maybe i will want to 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 use this brush and brush setting settings right here so it really depends on what you need right uh if you go here on the top right here on the top you can see that you have uh, some setups, right? So uh, on yours, it, you guys, you have Essentials, 3D, Graphic and Web, Motion, Painting, and Photography, right? This is basically uh, setups that Adobe uh, left for you. So if you don't know uh, anything, you can just uh, click uh, the one that you want to, to use. So for example, let's, let's suppose I want to paint. I click here, this is Photoshop, painting uh, setup, right? And for example, this is graphic design setup. This is photography setup. But you can create your own right here. So I have one and two. This is my one, right? And this is my two, right? So these are uh, setups that I created for me and I saved it here. To create one setup, you just need to, to leave on and off everything that you want. Like for example, if I want to, to leave uh, this this setup, is like the best for me, it's the one that I want. I can go here and click new workspace. All right, so click here, save, and there you have it. You can name it and there you go, All right? Uh, one thing that I have to say, some artists they use uh, plugins, right? What are plugins? Are things that you download and sites, you know, and they are not part of Photoshop, but you can buy them or sometimes download for free, and you can add on your Photoshop and win a feature that is not native to Photoshop. So, for example, one classic is colors. Colors. Is, is this thing right here now this is is on Photoshop right but before it was not so for example before you will see some artists using the color wheel and you will check your Photoshop and the color wheel it will, it was not there because they, they were using a, a, a plugin and there is like millions and millions of plugins for Photoshop. So if there is something that you cannot find on your Photoshop, maybe is a plugin, right? So just keep in mind, I don't use any, uh, any plugins, but 
if you see a tutorial or online video or something like that where the artist has some type of uh, different thing you know that is maybe a plugin another thing that I want to tell you is that here you can see untitled 1 and untitled 2 is because I had my file already and then I create another file so I can paint uh, two things at the same time you know I just for example I, I can be here painting on this then I click here and I go to another file imagine this like a piece of paper so this is piece of paper one and this is piece of paper two right if you already have a file and you want to open in Photoshop, you can drag and, and release in, photo, in Photoshop or you can go here, file and open. And then if you click here, just uh, go to the folder that your file is and open the file. Okay, it's really easy, really uh, uh, simple. So file, new if you want to create a new file, file, open if you want to to open a file okay so now I will explain to you guys uh, the main Photoshop feature that is layers right uh, what a layer is, is imagine that you have a, a piece of paper so let's do this a piece of paper right here and you add a translucent piece of paper on the top of this one. And you can draw here on the top of the other drawing. So for example, here I did this thing right here on one layer. And you can see right here on this thing right here, it's called layers. And I have the background in layer one. To create a new layer, you can click here on this uh, button right here and you will create a new layer. So when you open your file, you will have no layers, then you should create one, right? So here I create one layer. So now I can create another layer and I can still see what I, what I drew on layer one. But the cool thing about it is that I can draw on the top without changing the layer below. As you can see, so I can turn in and throw off the layer and the layer below it are, is not uh, 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 damaged or, or changed at all. So this is really good because in that way I can for example draw some type of face for example and I can go in another layer on the top so here is layer one here's layer two and I can draw on the top without changing the layer below so for example if I make a mistake oh made a mistake the layer below is still normal right so this is really good, for example, when you are doing a big illustration and you painted uh, a, a hair and you spend like uh, a lot of time painting the hair and the hair uh, goes in the top of the, the character's face and then, oh, the hair is not good, right? So you can just delete the layer and you still have the character below like it was before right so that's the best thing about layer you can also turn down the layer uh below 
and this is really good because you can do some type of sketch like I did here I sketch it uh, right here and let's suppose I want to clean this up so I can create another layer and I can lower the opacity on this layer right here so I can draw on the top of to clean my drawing okay so that's the layer features so again to create a layer you go here and click this button right here you create a layer to delete a layer you can drag here on this uh, trash can or press delete on your keyboard right another thing that you can do if you have a bunch of layers you can create a folder a group and you can put your layers into that group so for example imagine that you uh, draw and then paint you can draw your character on, on then can put all of these layers in a group then you can create another group and you can create another group for your painting and in this way you can organize yourself so this group features is to organize so for example here I have group uh, one drawing group two painting right um, so to create a group you can select the layers that you want if you want to select two layers just click shift and then you click group so for example to select m multiple layers just click and shift or you can click 4 and 1 and you'll select everyone or you can click control to select just the ones that you want so shift you will select uh, a bunch right for 4 for example uh, layer 4 to 1 or layer 4 to 2 and if you click uh, control you can select just the ones that you want uh, other thing that you can do if you double click on the name of the group you can rename the group for example layer 7 here if I double click it I can rename to for example lines hair and everything so you can uh, control and leave yourself already uh, organized if you want okay so I will delete all of these layers another thing that you can do is to load the opacity of the layer again if you want to draw it so did uh, your sketch and you want to to draw on top of it you can go here opacity turn down a little bit and you can see you you will turn down just only the layer that you are selected so for example if I do layer 2 and I do my drawing here if I change the opacity right here you can see the layer uh, 2 is not affected but if I select both of them I can select the opacity of both of them right another thing that you, t that you have in layers is layer mode but this is a little bit more advanced so I will not explain to you guys today but if, if you see someone uh, talking about layer modes you can change the layer mode right here but this is more advanced it's not uh, it's more for people that, that already know how to paint a little bit but sometimes a lot of distractions a lot of information that you have too much data now I will explain to you guys the tools right tools is this thing right here and you you will not use all of them and I also will not explain all of them for you I will just explain the ones that I think that are useful for artists uh, the first one this one right here 
is the move to and the move to as the name su suggests you can move things so for example you can move I can click a uh, control so for example if I click control this is move to or I can click here and move things so all of the tools here they have a shortcut shortcut and you can also change the shortcut and I will teach you uh, that uh, later but for now let's use a uh, here on the tool and if I know the shortcut I will tell you okay so this is control you can click control and move things you can also move photos that you have and you can move uh, everything that is on the screen remember that you will only move the layer that you selected for for example if I have layer uh, one head and layer two blue if I select layer one right here you can see that I can only move layer one if I select layer two I can only move layer two other thing that the move to do does is select layers so for example if I click control in the red ball right here I you can see that the layer one red is selected if I click with control or click here and click in the blue ball right here the Photoshop will select layer 2 and this, this is basically useful for you to move really quickly for example I'm painting I want to move both layers I just need to click and move click and move click and move if I click and hold you can see that some of them have some type of uh, arrow in the bottom right here this means that if I click and hold uh, other tools will show up but again I will only show if I think that the tool is really uh, useful right okay so next one is uh, selection right so selection is basically uh, you will select a uh, place on the canvas so for example I'll click here and I can draw the selection on the canvas so uh, with this selection I can draw only on this selection as you can see here another thing that I can do so for example I can go here to edit and for example I can click uh, fill or stroke with stroke for example I can create a stroke on this uh, uh, on the selection so for example I'll click here just so you guys can see and now I have a stroke right a line it's like the, the Photoshop drew for me if you want to deselect you can click uh, ctrl D so ctrl deselect ctrl D or you can go here select deselect there you go right so this is the selection tool if you click here and hold you have rectangular elliptical and it's just the same thing but it will change the shape of your selection so now I have a elliptical selection right there another thing that I can do so for example let's suppose that you want to paint everything besides the thing right here you can go here on select inverse so now the selection is the whole canvas you uh, uh, instead of only the elliptical uh, thing so I cannot draw over the elliptical thing right here next one Flosso 2 Flosso 2 is basically the same thing of the selection the difference is that I can control the shape so for example let's suppose I, I want to create a selection but it's not uh, a square and not the ellipse it's like an organic shape so I can draw the selection right here if I want to draw uh, outside the selection I do the same thing select inverse and I can draw outside the selection it's basically the same thing right uh, so here on lasso 2 we have the lasso 2 and the polygonal lasso 2 that is the ones that 
you use uh, most often. The lasso tool is basically a free form. You can draw every shape that you want. And as you can see here, you can create like weird shapes. And the polygonal lasso tool here, you create uh, straight lines, so it's good. You can create uh, different shapes, but in straight lines, as you can see here. The other thing that you have is quick selection. Quick selection, selection is basically the same thing again, but uh, when you have a photo or even your drawing, the quick selection is like Photoshop selects the thing for you. So for example, uh, I can go here and ask for Photoshop to select this uh, red circle instead of me going here into lasso tool and trying to get the shape I can go here on quick selection and let Photoshop do it for me as you can see Photoshop sometimes don't do a good job but basically it's the same thing it's like a AI version of the lasso tool now this one here is really important this is the crop editor the crop tool is basically for you to change size or, uh, of your canvas so for example I click here on crop tool and you can see that I got these things right here and with these things you can move your canvas so you can let your canvas uh, smaller or, or even bigger so for example this is my original canvas and I can make uh, the canvas bigger right so for example Right here. This is good because, for example, if you are painting into anyone to to make it, uh, your canvas big, like uh, you draw really, you drew uh, re really large and you want to have more space, you can just uh, adjust that and make your canvas bigger. Now let's go to the eyedropper or, or color picker. Uh, this the name is really eyedropper but people will call color picker this is really important especially if you want to be a painter uh, the eyedropper color picker is basically you can pick the color that is on your canvas or or even outside your canvas so for example let's suppose you are painting right here and you did uh, a character right and you paint the, the eyes and the mouth and the ears, you went for another part of the painting. For example, uh, the background, right? I don't know, some trees. And you want to, to paint the nose of the character, but uh, you don't re uh, uh, remember what color is this color that you put right here. So you, what we can do is to guess it, right? So we can go here and try to get the same color or you can press out, click on the color that you want to pick and Photoshop, it will go automatic to this color as you can see here. So for example, if I want white, I can click here. If I want green, I can click here. I can click even outside the, the, the canvas. For example, if I want to black, I can click here on the background and you will go here. You can also pick, pick colors from uh, photos, everything that is on your Photoshop, you can color pick it. So this is really good if you want to paint fast. So for example, if I want to paint this character, I can go here. Then I want to paint the neck and the neck is blue. I can color pick there. Oh, their hair is like the same green of this uh, tree, so I can color pick here. Like, instead of me going here and changing colors all the time. So now we go. We were gonna go to the brush tool. That is the the most famous uh, uh, feature for artists in Photoshop. That is basically a tool that simulates a brush so as you can see here I'm using one right now and I can simulate a brush I can simulate a pencil right I can simulate uh, a lot of things so the first question that people 
ask is like uh, what brush I should use or what brush do you use um, on my gun roll I have a free brush pack for beginners and you can just go and download there for free I wanna I'm gonna put the the link into this, the description once you get more advanced you can see that uh, you will have a lot of brushes but then uh, you don't need to worry because, for example, my, me, I most usually, I most use this brush right here and this one right here, right? Uh, so you just need the basic brushes to be okay. If you use the brush that Photoshop uh, came with, you're probably uh, good as well, right? So, uh, okay, this is the brush tool. To select your brushes, you can go here. On this uh, arrow, that arrow right here, then this window it will show up. Of course, yours it will not be like mine because mine uh, I have more brush packs than you, so uh, yours is will not be that much. So you don't need to worry about it, and you can just select a brush. So for example, let's pose one this brush right here. I click on it and I close it right here. Then now I have this brush. Right, uh, the shortcut for brush is B. So if you press B, for example, I am here on the move tool. If I press B, I can get uh, the brush tool. This is really, really important because if you want to paint fast, you want to, to change to a uh, brush, a razor, and move to a picker really quick. So knowing that a uh, brush uh, is B, it will help it your life uh, a lot so again the, the thing that you have to remember is that uh, brushes just emulate the real life so for example if you know how to draw with a pencil you can just get a brush and think that you are drawing with a pencil of course there are some brushes that try to emulate more a uh, brush you know a, a, a traditional brush but uh, most of brushes especially these ones right here uh, they try try to emulate uh, more uh, pencil thing or something like that. So for example, this one is a basic for Photoshop, and you can see that it's really really similar to a pencil or paint. So if you know how to draw for paint, for example, uh, I want to draw a, a face. Now you can see that it's really uh, similar. To any. Thing that you have All right. as you can see right so it's not really a complicated uh, tool the problem is that people f uh, uh, think that the issue is the brush and I can tell you that most of the cases, the issue is that uh, you don't have the knowledge of drawing and painting because uh, brushes are really, really easy to understand if you know the fundamentals of painting and drawing. So you don't need to worry, but uh, open your Photoshop and try to draw things, uh, test the brush, see what the brushes do because some brushes they are made for really really a, a specific reasons so for example i have this shank brush right here when i want to do some type of shank i just use this brush right here but again you don't need this you just need the basic brushes that emulate pencils so you can draw like you drew on paper if you are really good at traditional and how you want to to paint on digital it's basically the same thing so for example uh, you can get a more uh, traditional looking brush they have this texture for example and you just think that you are using some type of uh, uh, oil painting or gouache of course it's different but you get uh, uh, if you already know the foundations of painting of course you just need to keep painting and you will understand. You know, Photoshop is really a, a program that once you know what 
button do, does what, you just need to keep painting. Um, here, uh, on brushes, uh, you have the pencil tool, which is actually not good as pencil. You can use a brush tool and use a brush that simulates a pencil if you want to use a pencil. Uh, the other one that is kind of useful is this mixture brush tool that simulates uh, like you are mixing paint, you know, it's not really uh, the same thing and it's really good if you want to have a more painterly style, if you don't want to have this painterly style, this tool is not good for you, as you can see, I am like mixing paint, so this might be useful for you. Okay, now we have the eraser, right, which is the basically also together with brush the most useful tool. Uh, you can press E and if you press E you can go to eraser. So for example that's why it's good to know the shortcut because for example I'm painting right here and if I made a mistake I can just click eraser and erase. Right. Uh, there's a different type of eraser like brushes. If you click here you can actually change your eraser to your brush, so your brush uh, 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 functions also as a eraser. As I can see here, I'm erasing with this brush right now. Of course, you can do more advanced things. For example, you can paint with the eraser, but this is for more advanced artists. For now, you just need to know that E is the shortcut for eraser, and you can uh, erase things on your painting. And you can also use uh, brushes to change your eraser, right? Uh, the other one down here is the bucket tool and the gradient. The bucket tool, with the bucket tool you can paint a layer, right? So uh, it's like you throw some type of uh, bucket. This is really classic, right? In the gradient tool you can do gradients, right? Again, it's really uh, self-explanatory. Uh, of course, you can download gradients on the internet and you can also change the type of gradient. You can see here at the top. Again, this is more advanced things. So, well, for example, if you want a circular gradient, you can change to the second one right there. And now you have some type of uh, circular gradient right here. Now we have the smudge tool, right? The smudge tool is really, really useful uh, because it's similar to, it's actually uh, simulate your simulating your finger. So, for example, you have uh, you painted something here, you drew something, and remember on the traditional drawing when you when you want to pass uh, your uh, finger here, you can click here with Moist tool, and you can use it. Uh, yours must do it will not be like mine because again my is, uh, is a smudge tool that I download from the internet and like brushes you can custom make uh, your smudge tool here you have uh, the blur tool which is also useful uh, so I will teach you guys the blur tool is basically it will make, make things uh, blurry that's it you know, so as you can see, I don't know if you guys can see really, really well, but you can make things blurry, you can make uh, things blurry on your painting or on photos. Of course, there is a uh, better ways to do it, but again, since this is, this is a basic tutorial, I will just show you uh, uh, this version right here because the, the, because the other one is a little bit more complicated, right? Here we have the paint tool which is, it is a more complicated version of the selection tool. You basically select, select things, but it is a little bit uh, hard to, to understand how to use it. So uh, for now, I will, I will not uh, teach you guys, but this you guys to understand is, is the same thing as the lasso tool, but it is a little bit more precise, you know, so in the future, especially if you want to be an illustrator, you probably will want to learn the pen tool, right? Um, here is the basic test text. You can click here, click click here, and you can uh, put a text on your canvas. As you can see here, right? You can uh, write whatever you want. You can change, uh, for example, if you want to change uh, size, I can go here. Here I can change the size. Here I can change the 
the the type of letter that I want and you can download more on the internet if you want a really specific one right here I can put if I want uh, the, the bold regular one this is really simple uh, texting thing right uh, here I can select the color I can click here on the square and then I use this color right here to, to select right so it's really really simple here I have the uh, line tool which is a little bit useful especially when studying perspective you basically create a line here is the size of the line uh, mine is like uh, really really big because it's 22 right here but you can make uh, the line uh, a little bit thinner so I can create a, it's like I'm using some type of ruler and really good to to do perspective grids and perspective stuff as you can see right it's really really useful okay um, here is the hand tool uh, the hand tool is basically you can move uh, for example here I'm gonna give a, a zoom you can use the, the hand tool to move uh, your canvas right here uh, you can also do this by pressing a space bar so for example if I'm painting right here I can I can press and hold space bar and I can move so, or you can click here this hand, or you can hold spacebar, which the most most uh, useful uh, way is holding spacebar. Right. Uh, the other one is zoom that I did right here. It is one right here. So to zoom in, you can click here, and if you drag up, you zoom in. If you drag down, you zoom out. But you can also click Z on your keyboard and do the same thing. So up, you zoom in, draw down. Uh, you zoom out. Uh, if you want to customize uh, your shortcut, you can go here um, to edit keyboard shortcuts right here, and then you can change everything that you want. So, for example, I want to put my smudge tool on uh, the S letter, so I click here S accept there you go my smudge tool is on s uh, if it shows some type of window means that uh, this shortcut is already assigned it to another tool uh, the only thing that you need to do is to click ok and then you will reassign it to another tool so for example here you can see that uh, uh, eraser is e uh, gradate is g and Merge to is S because I, I, I uh, customize right now. Dodge to is O, and you can see all the shortcuts. Uh, one shortcut that is really useful is decrease brush and increase brush size. Because, for example, here you can see that C I decrease brush and V I increase brush right here. Because, for example, if I am painting and I want to increase the, the size of my brush, normally you have to go here and you need to change here on size, right? So for example, when I want a bigger brush, I go here and then and if I want an even bigger brush, I can go here, right? But for me, I configure it, so I press C, my brush goes smaller. If I press V, my brush increase size, and this is really good when I'm painting because if I want to do a small detail, I can just do this and I can change quickly sizes so I put C and V but you can put any other letters or numbers that you want again you go to edit keyboard shortcuts tools because you can configure everything but here I will uh, configure the tools and you can go here decrease brush size increase brush size a a everything you can just uh, go here and select the way that you want just change click accept and there you go okay so now we'll talk a little bit more uh, about the color and and some things about the brush because basically is the one that you guys use the most so uh, color you can uh, activate here on window 
uh, color and then it will get this uh, cube right here uh, if you don't like this cube you can change to uh, a lot of versions like color wheel uh, uh, RGB sliders lab sliders or whatever you want but I recommend you guys to use the hue cube or the color wheel because it's the most friendly user for beginners I like the hue cube because it's the way that I, I started and it's really simple here you can make uh, this smaller bigger as you can see here okay so here is basically black and white so black white and the middle have grays and you can just go up and down and here you can pick the color that you want to use right and brushes so uh, I'll put my color right here okay uh, things that you have to know about brushes is that for example you can put the layer mode on your brush again if someone says layer mode is really advanced so I'm not explain to you guys again but you can you know that uh, you can put a layer mode into your brushes that it is basically right here you can also change the opacity of your brush it's the same thing uh, with the layer. You remember that 100% opacity is like 100%, uh, like the brush is 100%. Imagine that, imagine that you are uh, uh, putting some type of paint on your brush. 100% is like uh, you dip your brush in paint. If you go here and you lower a little bit, no, your brush gets a little bit more. Uh, translucent right and you can change here to change back just go here here you can put the pink pressure on uh, opacity so for example I'm using a uh, paint display so I am drawing on a screen so for example if I go really really light you can see that my brush is really really really, really light if I press really hard my brush go hard and this is because this thing here is activated if I uh, as here is activated like I can did right now if I click here I deactivate it and now I lose I lose this property All right if you're using the mouse for example uh, you don't have this thing right here but if you're using some type of uh, thing that you're drawing with a pen you can have the opacity uh, feature right uh, flow is similar to opacity is not the same same thing but again since it's more advanced thing I will just explain to you guys like a similar thing to opacity you, you don't need to worry that much about it right now okay uh, here this uh, thing right here is good to know it's basically the same thing but it's for line weight so for example if I press really really thin because this brush is not really good to show that let me get another brush that isn't easier I think this one if I press really really light not only the opacity you will change but also the, the thickness of the line so for example here I am drawing really really light and here I'm drawing uh, put more more pressure on the pen and you can see how my line gets a little bigger this is because this one right here this feature right here if I turn off I don't have this anymore you can see that doesn't matter how much I press I get the same type of uh, uh, line thickness okay and this is symmetry uh, if I turn it in for example I get this ruler right here and I add this on my piece so for example I'll put here on the middle so if I draw in one size the other thing is drawn on the other side as you can see this is new to Photoshop kind of new but uh, the other versions you don't get this this image thing right here but it's useful uh, sometimes I do not recommend you guys to study It's more for really specific things like you are doing something for a character and you need to be symmetrical you active this thing but uh, in other ways uh, you don't need to do it okay 
Now, the last thing is how to save your image, right? You finished your painting and now you want to, to make a file to send to a client, you know, a JPEG or uh, any other format that you want. You just uh, click here on File, Export, Save for Web, click here. This window, it will pop up. And the first thing that you want to do and, and pay attention to it is to click here on original. If you let the this thing here op optimize it, Photoshop it will create a, a image that is like uh, lighter, but it also it will lose some of the quality of your image. So go to original. Here you can change the type of, uh, format of the image that you want, right? So the most common is JPEG. Um, here you can select the quality of uh, your image. So for example, if I let here uh, uh, 52 or for example 70, I will lose a lot of uh, quality of the image, but the image it will also get uh, uh, the size of the image to be like uh, smaller. So, uh, so if you want to change, for example, a, a email to a client and you don't want to change like a, a really huge file, you can just turn the quality down a little bit, right? You can also click here and here is like the Photoshop default. So for example, medium is third quality, right? And maximum is 100%. And to save, you just need to click here on save. When you click here, uh, you select the the folder that you want to, to save in and you are okay.